General Motors' iconic car discontinued, thousands facing layoffs. GM is yeah. laying off nearly 2,000 workers at its assembly plant in Fairfax, Kansas, as it gears up to discontinue a Chevrolet model that was once among its most popular. You've got here, Dad, the end of the Chevy Malibu. The Chevy Malibu is being discontinued and General Motors laying off 2,000 line workers as a result. Mm. Sedans are going by the wayside, even though we know consumers are demanding cheaper and cheaper vehicles. You can't be too shocked to see this, but also at the same breath, you're, it's kind of surprising. Like, why are they well, getting rid of a cheap sedan? They are. I, I feel bad for the workers, um, first off. I mean, that's, just, that's really unfortunate. Um, the fact that, you know, that they were... Uh, going to discontinue that vehicle you know it makes a great rental car you know i i am sure that they can continue to sell them to the rental car agencies of the world um and so it's unfortunate i, I and and many rental cars end up making pretty decent used cars I'm not suggesting for a moment that that malibu might be one of those um but the possibility exists you can get your hands on a good one Yep. Um, you know, and it was a fairly um, um, sizable sedan, roomy sedan. Um, and, and personally, I think sedan should make a comeback in this car. I, I think, if, I, I mean, I get why manufacturers don't want to advertise and push sedans. Um, they're, they're not nearly as profitable. But look, and, and I know people hate when I say this, but huh. look how well Chevy's doing with the tracks. You know, that's not a sedan, it's a crossover, but it's a cheap, inexpensive, and they have figured out how to make profits off of those vehicles. So, okay, maybe they have to sell five tracks to make the same profit they make on a Hummer. I don't know. Um, but the point is, you can create five new customers for your brand by selling them a tracks who might eventually replace the tracks with the next size up and the next size up and the, and and so they can they can actually become a customer for life because you had an entry level vehicle for them yep. and maybe more manufacturers need to remember that and think more along those lines so that they can figure out how to graduate their customers from their first vehicle um all the way up to their last and keep them in their brands the entire time. Yeah, definitely automakers have abandoned that concept. That's for sure. We at Car Edge have not abandoned you. I'm going to walk you through what I was doing while my dad was going there. Went to CarEdge.com, put in Chevy Malibu, got to this page. I found the local dealers that actually have Chevy Malibus. Then once I submitted that, I have access here. I'm going to scroll down to it. I'm just going straight to the dealer invoice. So I have all the invoice price breakdowns as well as we had a recent Chevy Malibu, de Malibu deal. And you can see huge savings yes. on these Chevy Malibus. And on this page, we also have all of the cost of ownership information as well. You can click on it right here. And that guide and checklist that I was talking about just a and, moment ago, all of that and, is 100% free back on caredge.com. Zach? Zach, is it true? There's 20% off on Car Edge Insights? Between now and November 4th, you can save 20% on Car Edge Insights, get access to dealer invoice price, target discount, and so much more to help you get the best car deal possible. Go to caredge.com slash insights. So it is true. All right, we said there was going to be damaged vehicles as a result of various hurricanes going on in Florida. Here is a Kia dealership that yes. Hurricane Helene totaling over 700 wait, wait, wait. vehicles. Oh my God, what the hell happened to that one? Is that an electric vehicle? It must have been. It caught on fire. Wow. Well, salt water and lithium batteries is not a good mix. That much I do know. How many vehicles were lost? 730. Ooh, my God. Their RDR total for the month retail delivery report total is going to be huge. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that is unfortunate. That's one way to clear out your inventory. Um, yeah, unfortunately, there's no profit associated with clearing out that inventory. Um, and your insurance carrier is probably going to drop you in the near future. But hey, you know, the bright side is, bright side is you'll, you'll have all new inventory at some point. Um, it is unfortunate. 
hopefully those vehicles that were damaged that the dealer might collect an insurance claim on, hopefully those vehicles don't somehow make it to auction somewhere and and get sold that way. I, I mean, I scary, would just, that's oh. the scary thought here. Like that's what can happen is yes, that these no, vehicles absolutely. get totaled and then they end up, uh, you know, finding their like, like, title washing. That's a big issue, especially in the South. So yeah, hopefully these things don't show up on dealer auctions and then uh, on dealer lots. It's yeah. trying to be sold. But yeah, there were tons, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of vehicles in the path of those storms and they got totaled. They got hit, man. They, yeah, they, are, no, they are done. You know, I, I, I have lived through blizzards and things of that nature. I uh, haven't, haven't had to live through floods or anything like that. But yeah, it's... It's difficult when you try and uh, I, I mean, I remember when it was Admiral Nissan in Pleasantville, New Jersey, and we got like a giant ass blizzard, which I guess you call a gab, a giant <laughs> ass blizzard. And it, it literally it took us four days to move everything, move, remove the snow um, be able to set back up to have like a viable uh, front line of cars. It, it, it was just, you know, and, and everybody in the dealership, you know, whether you were a tech or a salesman, it didn't matter. You didn't have cars to work on. So you had, you had lot duty of helping to clean the lot, and clean the yeah. cars and move the cars. And it was just, you know, just absolutely miserable. It is not fun. New York dealership sues former finance manager alleges he accepted kickbacks from extended warranty vendor. The lawsuit said the former employee accepted at least 40 grand in kickbacks annually and free vacations from an extended service warranty vendor. What happened here, man? There's some fraud at a car dealership. What? Uh, you know, go go figure that there could actually be an employee at a dealership that would not only rip off the customers that he or she came in contact with, but would rip off the owner as well. An equal opportunity fraudster. Oh, my goodness gracious. Go figure. And and, you know, I don't know why it took the dealership so long to figure it out. He was raking in here. I think it was a he was yep. raking in an extra 40 to 60 thousand dollars per year from the warranty vendor in kickbacks okay plus vacations um almost sounds like a politician um <laughs> you know going on a retreat somewhere um and and when i read the article it's like well they're saying uh there were no profits in in the warranty that he was selling because he if we sold it for 600 the vendor charged us 800 it's, you know, there, let me just, there, there are an inordinate number of crooked people in the automobile business. Let me rephrase it. There, there's an inordinate number of crooked people in every business. Yeah. Okay. Not just the automobile business. Yeah. And if there is a way for people to find a loophole, creative or not, legal or not um they will do it and typically they will abuse it um you know when there's when there's extra money on the table that's typically all the motivation somebody needs to figure out a way to do something that they shouldn't be doing 